In this video, you're going to learn how to find the inverse of a function algebraically. So what exactly is the inverse of a function? Well, what the inverse does is, say for example, if we were to put like a 5 in for x here, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 8 is equal to 2. So what that tells us is that 5 is mapping to 2. That's what our function is doing for us. But what we're looking for is we're looking for the inverse function that will take this output and bring us back to this input. So that's what we call f inverse or f to the negative one. This is the representation for the inverse of the function. So how do we do this? Well, the first step you wanna do is you wanna replace f of x with y. So we can think of this as y equals two x minus eight. Then what you wanna do is you wanna replace y with x and x with y. So you interchange, wherever you see y you put x, wherever you see x you put y. And then what you wanna do is you wanna solve for that new y. You wanna get that new y by itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from the outside in towards this y. I'm gonna add eight to both sides, keep it balanced. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide by two to get y by itself, do it to both sides. So now we have y equals, or if you want, you can use this inverse notation, f inverse of x equals x plus eight over two, or if you want, you can divide these both by two and say this is one half x plus four. Now let's test it out. So if we pick, take two, we put it in for x, one half times two is one, plus four is five. See how it's undoing or reversing or the inverse of the original function? Also what you can do is if you graph this, the y-intercept is four and the slope is one half. So we're going up one over two, up one over two. And our graph's gonna look something like, like this. And what you'll notice is, is that these two graphs are gonna be reflections over this 45 degree line, this is the line y equals x. So graphically, the inverse of a function is a reflection over this line y equals x. Now, sometimes when you're doing these inverse functions, you have what's called the domain restriction. And we're gonna talk about that in the next video. So I'll uh, see you over in that video right there.